Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new hardware review today with a very small keyboard. This one, the Drevo Caliber, which I'm gonna try and not show that much in camera, not because of the lighting effects, because I can switch those off, but because it's white and uh, the camera you're, that I'm uh, recording this with and you're seeing me through uh, doesn't have great white balance settings in the sense that it doesn't. So um, if, if I move it too close, it will ruin the green screen effect completely because it'll make everything a bit less, well, it'll unfocus things and make everything worse. This keyboard was sent to us by the people at Drivel. Very much appreciate the opportunity to review this unit. Also, they're letting us keep this, which is, again, very nice of them. So, uh, let's get on with the proper and full review of this very, very small and yet kind of useful keyboard. So, the first and most important thing you're going to notice about this keyboard is its size. It is absolutely tiny. It's not a 10 keyless keyboard. I mean, yeah, it is because it doesn't have the uh, the numpad, but it also doesn't have the uh, the upper level of buttons, you know, the, the function keys. These are sort of uh, implemented like you would see on some older uh, laptops that didn't have the function keys, where you just access them by pressing FN and the associated uh, number button, you know, 1 to one through min to minus and uh, to plus. Also, the escape key does double as a um, apostrophe and as a uh, console key, you know, the, the... I don't know what this thing is called in English, we call it approximately in, uh, in my language. Also, because it is so small, it is very light, uh, quite portable and uh, it does have the ability to be used via Bluetooth with any device that supports Bluetooth 4.0. This saddle does not include my PC, I only have a Bluetooth 2.0 uh, dongle with it so I couldn't actually test properly on a computer but I have tested it on the phone and I can say for certain that it does work quite well on the phone. There were some issues with the lag at times, but I do believe that's mainly because the software I used to actually record, uh, well, to actually test the input was uh, Google Docs. And like every uh, Google application that runs on Android, it is slow as hell, pointlessly overstuffed with stuff and kind of uh, not all that great. I mean, it's the kind of thing that doesn't work on a tablet with 512 uh, megabytes of RAM, even though it's a text editor and it should work but it doesn't and on a phone with two gigs of ram it was at times sort of a bit slowish and yeah i didn't really like that but uh, otherwise it uh, worked quite nice i mean it even uh, withstood the um the head to the keyboard test meaning that it does have full anki rollover even on a phone which makes sense because it, the anki rollover stuff is coded into the keyboard itself like it's it's in the wiring so yeah that that was actually very nice um you can use this wired as well on a computer which i most that's mostly how i used it uh, wired on to my pc and I used it to write a bunch of stuff, a bunch of Tale of Doom, some, um, some I think like about two miles of, of articles in, in two weeks, and also to play some games like, uh, oh, some fighting games especially. I was very curious to see exactly how this keyboard would um, would function with um, games that required a, kind of a, lot of, a lot of input. And it did actually handle itself quite well. If you're going to use it as a Bluetooth device, uh, it's actually quite useful because you can pair it with three different uh, devices. It's got uh, a setting for three individual devices with Q, W, and E. You have to press FN and keep it FN and um, Q, W, or E uh, for uh, about three or five seconds, so it will show up in the uh, the pairing mode of uh, another device. And also, if you want to keep it plugged into your PC, but still use it on your phone or tablet, you can absolutely do that. You can uh, press FN and R and it'll work. Um, it will still be connected to your PC. It will be charging from it, but you will be using it on its Bluetooth interface. One thing I gotta say is that I'm not all that happy with uh, the way they handle the, the battery indicator. Namely, I don't, there, there isn't one. You will not know for certain exactly what amount of life the battery still has in it. I've not seen a way that it does show it. It did run on the battery once for me um, after about a week. Uh, I pretty much just left it to, to the side for a bit for a couple of days and when I came back to it it uh, wasn't working anymore so I had to charge it. But the thing I like is that it does show you if it is charged fully when you actually charge it because the, this thing, the spacebar, will glow green if it's still charging. If it's completely charged it will change the color you have set in the, you know, the other lighting settings. Now let's get down to, uh, to more um, pressing details like the build quality of this. It's made out of a um, durable enough plastic shell with uh, with an aluminum faceplate, which doesn't add a lot of weight to it. 
Also the 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 aluminum. Well, I want to say it's the most. It's the greatest looking aluminum. It's it's not that brushed aluminum kind of uh, aesthetic to it. It's that speckled thing that just looks looks like it just came off the uh, the foundry uh, assembly line. Oh, foundries don't have assembly. Oh, it it doesn't look all that aesthetic, honestly. Yeah, the aluminum. But hey, uh, it's it's aluminum, so it it it'll still uh, it'll still mean that your keyboard is resilient, and not really all that bendy. And uh, yeah, it is kind of spill-proof. Well, to a certain point, you will uh, probably need to clean it quickly. I mean, that's what it says in the manual. But for the most part, you won't uh, have that much trouble getting dirt in it or unremovable stains that you can't um, you can't clean because you know you would have uh, plastic in the way that stains is or something like that. It's it's easy to clean, like most of the keyboards that have the the keys uh, very well lifted up from the uh, from the base plate. But, um, oh yeah, uh, one more thing, um, rubber, it's got rubber on the feet, rubber on the extension, so yeah, this thing will not slide off if you leave it on a uh, even surface, though I'd not actually recommend leaving it on an even surface, though that's just because of the model I have, it's, it's not balanced, like it's, it, it's not straight, the model I have isn't straight, and I mean that when you place it down, either like this or with the feet extended, it will wobble. And it's annoying, it's small and it wobbles. That really affects my ability to actually type at high speed or, you know, play Marvel vs. Capcom well, because it, there, there's a wobble to it and you don't want to wobble on the keyboard. It's not extremely noticeable, like you can just put a piece of paper under this part and it'll work, but it did it, it get a bit annoying. Also, but if you're gonna hold it in, I don't know, in your lap or something, yeah, you won't have any trouble with it, it'll work fine with no problems, so that's really not much of an issue. One thing I like to say that I like is that the, the keycaps themselves, they have that... They're sort of a texture to them, uh, like they're not completely flush, not flat, not... Uh, uh, ultra fine, but they they have that sort of rubberized stage texture you'd see on um, on some uh, some mice or maybe some game pads. I actually confused it first for rubber, but no, it's, it's I think it's just a plastic that's uh, plastic that has very very small fine ridges on it. That honestly makes them feel so smooth. It, it's 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 just very nice to run my hands over them. They're they're very nice and uh, that. Because of the the porous structure of porous nature of the uh, the ensemble, they may get dirty with time, but uh, currently they look quite fine, and uh, there is no problem with the light not getting through them properly. Like all the keys are uh, very very well lit, there is no issues with uh, some of them being only partly visible. Uh, one thing to note is that the uh, the extra um, uh, extra things, you know, the F1, F2, F3, the other things, they are they don't have their own. Um, on uh, how you call it, uh, they don't have a hole through which the light goes through, so they're just um, drawn. No, they're they're stickers basically, drawn on the side of the keys. So uh, if you're in the dark, no, actually, if you're even if you're in the dark, you'll still be able to see them because this thing lights up quite well. Because it's a white keyboard with white keys on an aluminum faceplate, this thing radiates. And I mean, <laughs> I kind of have to turn it off at night. Be well, actually, at night and in the evening because it just completely obscures the bottom half of my monitor. Well, not the bottom half, but part of the bottom of the monitor. It just glows at it. But thankfully, you can decrease the um, the intensity of the lights by using the uh, the function and the uh, up and down arrow keys, which you should probably have done since the beginning of this video and not uh, blinded the uh, blinded you and, you know, absolutely ruined the green screen. Effect. But you can see it here and on the background, especially, especially on the background. In terms of lighting, it does have quite a few features. Uh, you can uh, set two predefined um, uh, sort of custom configurations where you would put every key exactly how you want it to be. Uh, they are done through the FN page up and page down buttons, and you can switch between them with the FN and home uh, home keys. You also have um, FN and Del, which uh, delete, which will just give you a solid color with uh, only one color, and you can switch between well, basically blue, red, white. Uh, all sorts of other stuff. The standard color is still RGB. You know what RGB does. It's not. You know, it's it's not completely fully customizable. 100% as RGB. Well, that doesn't make sense. But it it's got enough colors. Also, you have some interactive modes in the um, FN Plus Insert uh, setting mode, which will let you you know uh, make the keys light up when you type. They'll scroll. They'll flash. They'll 
do lines and you also have the um the show effect sort of the um sort of like a demo of what it can do with the fn and and which will sort of slide things down move things side to side it's it's a nice enough effect it it looks nice like this actually is probably nice and uh, again a keyboard that has white um white keys and a aluminum backplate that reflects everything it's going to look a lot nicer a lot the more uh, a lot stronger the, the lighting will look a lot better than it will on a black keyboard even during the day and that's uh, that's quite nice now in terms of uh, performance um, one thing to note is that this keyboard uses um, red uh, switches the um, the stencil on the well not stencil the um, engraving on it which i can probably show you if i pull this off these are Drevo switches, meaning that they have the same brand as the company that uh, makes the keyboard. I uh, don't think they actually make the switches. From what I uh, found out on the web, it's uh, they may be Otemu switches, which are like the ones I've seen on the uh, the keyboard I gave to Raul, uh, the one from Habit. Uh, they were nice enough keys, but those were those were blue ones. These are red. Now, what's the main difference between uh, reds, blues, and the browns we have uh, currently on most of our keyboards? Well. Um, reds are sort of like browns they don't have that click 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 to them and they also do not have a tactile bump so you're basically just uh, you're gonna have to jam them to the fullest to get any sort of uh, feedback to them any sort of um, tactile feedback you will not get anything from the switch itself just from the key actively hitting the plate hitting the end uh, of the travel point that uh, may sound a bit uh, annoying to people that uh, like to type, like a, f a very good feedback to when they type, uh, when they press each button so they know they actually um, get get a response for the keyboard. So it may not be the greatest for typing, but it is a fast keyboard because without the, without the bump, there is there's less pressure, there is less force that needs to be uh, exerted under the key itself. So that may, may make uh, the keys actually faster for things like gaming or to a point even time. Like if you're if you're accurate enough to the point where you don't need a tackle bump, then maybe you'll actually get a speed boost in your typing. Who knows? I mean, uh, to me, they sort of kind of were the same as the uh, the Browns from uh, from uh, Kale. Only unlike the Browns from Kale, they they actually work. None of the keys are broken. They are all functioning. They are all responsive. They are all, they all work exactly as they should which again you would think it's not something i have to say in a keyboard review but as we've seen in the past mentioning that the keys actually work from the get-go seems to be necessary because sometimes they don't but in this case yeah they all work properly and there's no issue with them not responding as they should the main point of the caliber seems to be to let people use a mechanical keyboard even though they're not in a scenario where they could feasibly use one, like they they don't have access to a computer, they can only type on their phone, or they don't have a computer that has a, a USB port. But you know, a laptop, for example, sometimes they don't have extra USB ports, but they do have Bluetooth, uh, as long as it's 4.0 or, or newer. And in that aspect, yeah, it, it kind of does a job. Like, it really does its job. It's it's a fine mechanical keyboard with red switches, so it'll be silent, it'll be fast, and it is quite portable. Though I have to say, it's maybe not superbly suited for work. Um, namely, there's one thing that sort of disappoints me. There is no print screen, like at all. I kind of use the print screen function a lot uh, to, you know, capture pictures and manipulate them and do stuff to them. But there's there's no print screen on this keyboard, which is very, very disappointing to me. They could have implemented it by, you know, just having it uh, be as a uh, side function to, I don't know, maybe, maybe this or the backspace. Or they could have uh, done one better. And they could have moved the, uh, the entire... Uh, the block of keys, the edit keys, they're gonna move them a bit lower so they're right on top of the uh, the arrow keys and just added one more layer on top of that uh, through which they could put um, the print screen maybe some, uh, well I, I'd say media buttons but what would they have? Volume up and volume down? Well yeah! They could have done that! Print screen, volume up, volume down! Sold! <laughs> it would have been better than the keyboard I have now in terms of um, where the, you know, the accessibility of some buttons but yeah, uh, they also do have a, a version of this that does have the function key, so you could probably get the, that functionality out of that that model. I don't know exactly what that model was called. I should have looked it up. But yeah, it's uh, it's sort of the same thing, 10 kilos, but with the uh, the function keys attached. 
And in terms of pricing, this is around $65, which well, it's a it's a fully functional 71 key mechanical keyboard. I think it's 71 keys. Haven't actually counted them. And they all work. And they're kind of smooth in there, the way they function. Like they I haven't had any issues with it at all so far. It, nothing has broken. I've been using it for a, a weekend and a week and a bit to write articles and game and you know play Marvel vs. Capcom without actually breaking it over someone's head, which is a bonus. It always is a bonus. And I've been using it to type on the phone from time to time. Though again, uh, a phone isn't necessarily the greatest way to edit text on account of the screen being so small. But yeah, on a PC it, it works it worked just fine. It works well on the phone too, but as long as it's on the phone you use it to text people and write on Facebook, not write books. Through Google Docs, because that, that will not end well. <laughs> it never does. Um, yeah, I recommend you give this a go if you need uh, a keyboard that is this portable and works to Bluetooth. It's it's not overly expensive. We've had more expensive keyboards on the show, I believe. Think. Well, depending on where you get this, because I've seen this in some places for 100 bucks, which is kind of ridiculous. Like for 100 bucks, no, but 65, yeah. Eh. I'd say it's, uh, it works, give it a go. It also comes with uh, the charging cable, which uh, it's kind of stuck right now on, on the head of a dragon, so I can't actually pull it up properly. Come on, give it back. It's one of those uh, cables that sort of looks like an Apple thing, so uh, it may break. But thankfully, I do believe it'll actually be, it'll actually work with pretty much any kind of uh, USB cable because it's uh, not really that, uh, that proprietary. And most importantly, if you do not like red switches, it's okay because you can actually buy this with different switches. Actually, you can take the switches off themselves and replace them with what you want. But uh, the um, the version they have on their store can actually be configured with pretty much any kind of switch you want. They have blue switches, brown switches, black switches, I think. So you can basically make this out to be the keyboard that uh, better best suits your needs. For me, well, reds, reds are okay, should have probably picked blue, because I like the clickiness of it, but since I, I sort of plan on using this in bed when I'm really, really lazy, maybe the reds are kind of okay, I mean, they don't require that much effort, and they will not wake the dead, unlike blues. So this would be it, I'm gonna be back soon with more reviews of stuff that probably will not mess up the green screen quite as much, but uh, hey, who knows, maybe we'll, uh, we'll review a light bulb next, and that will ruin absolutely everything. Yeah, we'll see. Take care. Goodbye.